today we're going to be making cachiena. And cachiena is a dish that um, was popular in Aruba when I lived there. And it's a, it's a dish that the, um, the, the Dutch came up with to utilize their, the, um, the rind of the, of the Gouda cheeses. And so Dutch are known to be frugal people, so they wanted to come up with a way to utilize that hard rind. So what they did was they stuffed it with a meat mixture. Um, in this particular case, we're using ground beef, but you can also use ground chicken. We've got some butter we're gonna melt and brown the, um, brown the ground beef. We've got some onions, green peppers, tomatoes, a habanero pepper um, that are gonna go in with that. Cooked a little bit, and then we're gonna add the chopped, chopped olives, green olives, capers, raisins, and some nutmeg. I've got some sliced gouda cheese, so I'm gonna, so we buttered these ramekins. Just a nice layer of butter. Use one tablespoon between the four ramekins. And then we're gonna just layer these with the Gouda cheese. And line that inside of those completely with the Gouda cheese. Put the cooked uh, beef filling inside of there once that's all done and ready to go. And cover it with some more cheese and then bake it in the oven. So let's get started. So we're gonna start by melting some butter. We've got two tablespoons of butter in a saute pan. And we're gonna brown the ground beef. Got capers, and some raisins. I'll just run a knife over quickly. Put the nutmeg in there. A quarter teaspoon of nutmeg. Green olives, I'll chop up. Okay, so our butter is melted, so we'll get the ground beef in here. So while the beef is browning, we can chop the onions and the pepper and the tomatoes. So we want a pretty fine chop on these. Okay, turn that off for now. Okay, green bell pepper. This is a large bell pepper, so I'm just gonna use half of one. Gonna take a tomato core and pull the cores out here. I'll squeeze the uh, the juice out of the tomatoes. Get rid of the seeds. And just a small. Small chop on these two. Okay, so I'll get the onions, the peppers, and the tomatoes right into the pan with the ground beef. And then I just have the habanero left. And this is uh, a, a variety called a Helios habanero. It's one that I 
grow in the farm. This is comes from a plant that's two and a half years old now. And this is on the smaller side. I'm just gonna take that tomato shard and pull out the ribs and the seeds. That's where all your heat is. I want a little bit of heat in this, but even a small habanero like this is going to provide so much heat for four portions of acacia yenna. So I'm going to pull the seeds out, cut the ribs out, and then what I normally do with chili peppers, because you never really know what you've got until you've tasted it. Uh, so I'll cut a small piece and uh, taste just a small piece of it to get an idea of how much heat there is and determine whether I'm going to use a whole the whole small habanero or if I'm going to add just part of it. Maybe just half. Okay, so I'm going to just cut a little piece off of here. Sliver, taste that. And I love habaneros. They've got a such a unique flavor, a citrusy kind of um, flavor with that really intense heat. And I'll probably just use a half of one. So. I'm gonna take my time and cut this a little bit finer because you don't want a big piece of that ending up in, uh, in a spoonful of it. In case you get on. So I've got the other half. I can add a little bit more of that at the end if, if I've determined that it um, doesn't have enough heat. So for now, I'll start with that half of the habanero. And we'll turn the burner back on and cook this for a few minutes. So we're kicking this for five more minutes. Cook the onions through and the peppers and the tomatoes. We'll turn that heat to about medium. Okay, so that while that's cooking, I'll start lining the ramekins with the cheese. So I've got these four ramekins, and I've got a little cutter that will nicely cover the bottom of the ramekin. Overlapping those just a little bit there to make sure we have good coverage. We'll use all these little scraps on the top at the end. Okay, so that's been about five minutes. It's nice and cooked. Just gonna add all the chopped olives, capers, raisins, nutmeg. And then I'll get some salt. Careful with the salt, because you have olives and capers, which are already pretty salty. And a little, a big, big pinch of pepper in there. what our mixture looks like. And this was one pound of ground beef. It's going to be plenty for these four ramekins. I could probably even make bigger ones. Okay, so let's get a taste of that. Hmm. 
Yeah, very good. Perfect amount of salt. I don't get a lot of heat, so I'm gonna add the other half of the habanero. Should elevate the heat a little bit on that. Okay, and we're ready to stuff the ramekins. And I've got my oven preheated to 350 degrees. And I'll just use these scraps to fill in on this one. I'm gonna bring some water to a boil. And one of the problems I have with my range is that a small pot doesn't fit very well over, it won't stay stable. So I have this little star-shaped extender that provides some stability there. And I put that on there and holds it nice and stable. So I'm gonna bring that to a boil. That'll be for the water bath for our Keshiana. And we've got a use a roasting pan. I have this ceramic baking dish that will work for, for that. And then we'll fill that halfway up with water and um, get those in the 350 degree oven and bake those for about an hour. Okay, so our water's come to a boil here. And we'll pour that into the baking dish here, about halfway up the sides. And then we'll get that right into the 350 degree oven. Five minutes, and it looks like these kishiana are done. For the final plate up of the kishiana, I've got some olives, capers, um, tomato julienne, and some poblano pepper slices. Um, ingredients that all went inside of the kishiana. It's also possible to serve that with a, a small garden salad um, with a nice dressing. I, I've done it often with a papaya seed dressing, which is very nice. So we're just going to remove the kishi in it from the ramekin. We should just pop right out of there. Pop it a little bit with the spatula. There we go. Let's release it on the top there. It's just a suction issue. Nice to let it rest so that the cheese kind of firms back up a little bit. And then I've got the roti bread that I'm going to serve with that. you enjoyed this video and are inspired to recreate it at home. Make sure you hit the subscribe button below and I would appreciate a thumbs up if you liked it. Comment below if you have any suggestions or requests for future videos. Check out my website at chefmichaelsalmon.com for recipes, my online store with links to my favorite tools and ingredients, and information on my two cookbooks.